Uh, so first story, uh, the regular update. How are we doing on uh, COVID-19 in Tokyo? Well, um, celebrate everybody. We've done it. Uh, mission accomplished. We are out of the state of emergency, not because we reduced the uh, average daily cases to 100, as was the uh, target to exit from the state of emergency. In fact, for the last week and a half, cases have steadily been increasing in Tokyo. Not out of control. Uh, you can see at the top, it's basically increasing 108%. So basically going up 8% from last week every week. Um, it's, it's basically the, it's bottoming out at about 280 right now cases per day uh, Tokyo prefecture 14 million people so you know it's it's, uh, it's not bad bad it could be a lot worse there's a lot of countries in the world doing worse but uh, you know but by Tokyo standards the hope was that you know the, the numbers did come down from uh, very high numbers but they seem to be bottoming out it's not clear if this is because uh, of the um, you know mu mutations or whatever um, but uh, it, it, apparently the, the, at the moment of course the regular COVID tests don't tell you if it's a mutant strain or not you just take the COVID test and it says you got it or you don't but there are, there are various study groups now being more proactive about also doing uh, follow-on tests and sampling based tests to see how much the uh, UK South African and Brazilian strains are here and it seems that the UK strain in particular uh, actually made up 55% of the cases in Kobe where where cases are going up so uh, it looks like right now this is probably a big part of the reason that the um, numbers are bottoming out and they're not going back down to 50 or 40 a day like they were before. Uh, it does appear that the more contagious newer strains of the virus are here. So, um, uh, and, and they seem to be the reason that the numbers are, are, are bottoming out at a, at a much higher level, which is something definitely to be concerned about. I think now that we have talk about the um, vaccinations getting lined up, uh, I see everybody being, uh, I see a lot of voices being very frustrated on Twitter at the speed of Japan's rollout, but frankly, globally speaking, I mean, yes, of course, UK uh, and America, which basically did no safety checking, <laughs> uh, you know, the vaccines were developed there and uh, they wanted to rush them out and they did and they got to be the guinea pigs for the world and congratulations on that and they've actually done a good job as Israel's the other one which stands out in terms of vaccinating. Um, but Japan doesn't stand out slow on this. Um, you know, they, they've secured uh, a good number of supplies, which will start flowing in uh, basically April, May, June, July. Um, and they'll be going to elderly and people in need of them first. So regular folk are not going to get it through and, until at least like through the end of the year. But, you know, um, I think Japan is still, sure, if you're in the United States or, or uh, the UK or probably a little bit more slowly, but in Europe, yeah, you're probably going to have faster access to them. Frankly, Europe, UK and America need them because they're in a much worse situation. But um, yeah, yeah, I, I'm quite comfortable if you look at, uh, in fact, I think I got into a thing the other day on Twitter where, yeah, if you look at a map of the world, Japan is going to be in the, the nations that are probably going to be fully vaccinated by like early 2022, which puts Japan actually pretty, pretty high up there. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, we're not going to be clear in the short term. And sure, I, w I would love to get a vaccine as soon as possible. But uh, I understand I I'm, I'm not complaining about the speed of it. But the situation right now is that it's bottoming out and it looks like it's going to it's almost certain to increase again so we're certainly not out of the woods and i think that's the problem now that people are talking vaccines people are thinking well i guess i can ease up now because vaccines will be going around soon but i think that's a real danger right now in europe and america but uh clearly that still is not the case it's going to take a long time to get around and right now it's getting more contagious and frankly i, I guess the merit of going fast is that um you know the um, with the, the the more the more it is widespread, uh, the more it, opportunities there are for it to mutate and develop. You know, uh, strains which are immune to the uh, to the to the vaccine being given. And yes, I know that the vaccine is not supposed to actually kill the virus. It simply neutralizes it within the body. It doesn't mean that you can't still pass it on to people. Yet at the same time, there's data from Israel. And I think from UK as well, which actually says that even where they uh, test non-symptomatic people who have received the vaccine, for some reason they have it a lot less, like like 90% less, almost the same as people, you know, the, the rates of people showing symptoms or whatever, the effectiveness. So it's not clear. It seems to be doing something in terms of at least preventing it catching or latching on in the body or whatever. So it looks like it's doing a good thing. Um, but yes, uh, related to that, and these are all part of the same story, uh, but um, 
Yes, so although the, the, the state of emergency in Tokyo, basically the reason that they're ending the state of emergency today is not because we reached the target numbers. We did for the uh, emergency bed occupancy rates, but not for the, tar the target number of cases. Was well, 100 per day? No, it's been going up to 280 per day. However, it is being lifted because uh, the government has no more ideas. <laughs> uh, and they're worried that, uh, frankly, the, the, the impact of the state of emergency is losing its impact because people are getting kind of fatigued by it. So what they're doing is they're lifting the state of emergency in Tokyo and the surrounding three prefectures to Today, Chiba, Saitama, and Kanagawa. Uh, however, that doesn't mean that um, you know it, it's party party. Uh, have your Hanami party and everything. Although that is kind of the signal that's being sent by this. But no, the the actual uh, message is that the. Um, um, they still want restaurants and so on to continue closing early. They still want people to take voluntary measures. Uh, they, they still, which is basically all that we've had anyway. There haven't been, there's never been a mandatory lockdown in Japan, but they're they're basically saying that you know continue what you're doing, what you're doing, but we're 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 going to take away the state of emergency uh, banner for now uh, uh, until it gets really serious again. And I suppose at least based on the increase, partly based on the increase in hospital beds available, which has reduced the pressure on hospitals, uh, but also uh, a decreased number of serious cases of course those lag increases in cases so if, if the cases go up you know the beds the hospital system will come under pressure again but for now the government had decided that although they didn't reach their exit targets um frankly there are some people in, in government who admitted um that they don't really know what else to do uh, they are not going to in japan it's not considered constitutionally possible to have a lockdown so yeah uh we are out of it really frankly having never really taken much measures that said i mean some people it's easy to to, to to be cynical about that and say well the japanese government isn't doing anything but at the same time we've got a better result than most places i mean certainly there are places of course that are doing better south korea taiwan New Zealand, Australia, you know, there are countries, uh, Vietnam, um, there's a bunch of countries doing better than us, but, you know, nowhere in America or Europe is doing better than Japan, in spite of the fact we're not really doing anything very much other than voluntary compliance, so... Yeah, yeah, you know, it's 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 kind of we're kind of muddling through it. Uh, I don't think you know the government here has never aimed for zero cases, and um, yeah, uh, we'll see we'll see how it goes. My hope, obviously, is that it doesn't spike up again. Uh, but meanwhile, and this is separate to the Olympics, which I'll talk about in a moment. But the government has been talking for a while, specifically the new the upcoming doesn't even exist yet, but the upcoming digital agency, which is due to be created this year has actually uh, suggested that as part of the digital government, they could actually do, the, we could use apps to fix um, uh, foreigners bringing in viruses to Japan. Um, apparently the idea is that they will require visitors to Japan going forward, who right now visitors, you, you cannot basically, I think Japan is still pretty much shut down. In fact, they were talking this week about limiting entrance to Japan to 2,000 per day. That includes Japanese people. Um, and also, for example, uh, people coming, uh, athletes coming for the Olympics will give them, be, be given priority over people with visas, for example, students and so on. So there's a lot of trouble being caused by that. But those foreign visitors that do come to Japan apparently will be forced at their own expense to make sure that they have a smartphone and they will be forced to install three apps. Uh, on those smartphones uh, one will be a location tracking app one will be Skype um, and one will be something else what were the three apps now um, but essentially they've said that the uh, Coco the, the 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 contact tracing app which uh, people didn't notice wasn't actually working for like the first 12 months that it was actually in operation both developed by I think that was developed by Microsoft as well but, you know, so basically they are forcing everybody at their own expense to install, and this OSMA is a location tracking app. So essentially this is like when you visit North Korea or Turkmenistan and those, you know, dictatorships put a minder next to you so that they know every, everywhere that you're going and they, they, they can keep tabs on you. And ostensibly this is to do with, um, you know, COVID-19 related uh, tracking and just checking if, uh, if, you, if we have someone who turns out to have had COVID-19, you can find out where they went and do contact tracing afterwards uh, without having to. And I suppose uh, given that the, the manual interview based system for contact tracing that they have in Japan, this should make it easier. The, Co the, the Coco app doesn't, doesn't actually say where you got it or who you got it from. It simply says that um, anonymously that you've been within contact with somebody who had it for longer than 15 minutes so i suppose it makes sense in that regard that it makes the lives of contact tracers easier on the other hand this is a monitoring app and it's not clear that this is going to uh, be necessarily end with the end of the pandemic um, it's kind of vague the parameters around which it's being introduced it will be mandatory uh, a, a, along with deportation being a penalty for not complying with this and this is not just for tourists either uh, this will be for people on temporary visas like student visas and so on as well 
Um, and it, it kind of amounts to having an ankle, like a parole, parolee ankle bracelet uh, you know, on you. So, you know, it, it's quite a, uh, on the one hand, I can kind of understand the logic behind it. On the other hand, you, for a start, most of the cases of COVID being brought in from overseas, including by Japanese, you know, if, uh, uh, the UK variants and whatever have been brought in by Japanese returning from overseas, not by foreigners. There are definitely cases of foreigners, including one English person or British person um, from uh, Reuters, uh, I believe, who actually lost their job because they came back to Japan. They had the virus and they violated their uh, promise. Well, they crossed their fingers, and, and, you know, <laughs> that they were going to stay at home and they went straight to a party and, fe and infected everybody at the party. And I don't think they were patient zero for the uh, UK mutation, but they, they caused a lot of cases. And right now, those are most of the cases in Japan. <laughs> But um, but that said, uh, Japanese are bringing this back too, and they're not doing this with them, I presume, because they can do contact tracing. But nonetheless, this is quite an intrusion, and I'm hoping it doesn't become a default for just monitoring all foreigners in Japan. And I hope they realize the effect. I mean, again, the whole idea of the Olympics and everything, and the whole tourism push, making Japan seem friendly, and it is friendly and relatively like compared to um, countries around uh, when you travel around Asia that restrict internet, that do you know. All kinds of monitoring of foreigners in Japan really doesn't. And all of a sudden, this is like a digitized sort of North Korea type <laughs> thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, on the one hand, I kind of understand it. But on the other hand, you know, they're doing this because they are not capable of setting up a proper quarantine procedure. They're doing it based on trust. Uh, and almost, I suppose, having the location tracing app is a uh, presumption that it's going to fail and they're just going to need to figure out where the sick people went. Um, which also comes into the discussion that's been going around this week about requiring um, vaccine passports, requiring proof um, that people uh, have uh, already received vaccines. <coughs> Interesting, I've only been in a couple of discussions about that. Apparently the system in Israel is working quite well. Um, Although some people say that you can fake them easily. Some people say, well, it'll be unfair. It'll be discriminatory towards people that can't, for medical reasons, take the vaccine or the under 16s who can't receive it. But, you know, I think the point is, is that nobody can come to Japan or travel. And, and the question is, who do you trust and allow to come in on an exception basis? And, you know, um, again, I, I, I get the, the challenge that, well, you still might be contagious even if you're vaccinated. Um, although, again, the data that we have so far indicates that, uh, and it seems to be working pretty well, that allowing in Europe, Europe's looking at this, Australia's looking at this, Israel's using this. And it seems that when people are vaccinated, uh, whether it's... Um, that you're not carrying it anymore, which might not be the case, but it seems that you're not giving it off or you're, you're not as easily contagious because the data seems to be showing that, uh, you know, the, the vaccine, having a large number of people vaccinated uh, seems to have a positive impact. Oops. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. And then you've got the whole thing about, well, you know, I, 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 li I like the idea that it's a, it's a kind of incentive to get vaccinated in a country where it's not going to be mandatory in Japan. In Japan is, is super like, you know, decide yourself and they share lots of the risk information. And, you know, yeah, you could pay everybody a bonus or a positive incentive to get vaccinated. But I do like the idea that you're, you know, you have special privileges um, that you want that you'll miss out on if you don't get vaccinated uh, for now. So I'm kind of, oh, I, th I think the idea is interesting. I recognize there's a lot of problems with it. But that's where Japan is going right now. If you've got plans to come to Japan, unfortunately, if you're in the UK or America or one of those very few countries that's uh, ahead of Japan in terms of getting vaccinated, um, good news is it could actually provide a way that you could come here really soon. Uh, most of the world is still not going to be able to come here otherwise. So yeah, yeah. But the the, the inst making you and making you use Skype. I mean, it's, isn't that like even Microsoft is is kind of dropping Skype all over the place at the moment, or at least Skype for Business. They're moving to Teams for that. But you know, I don't know if any of you saw the um, what was it Comedy Central? Oh, not Comedy Central. Ah, I forget it, but there was a great video where the CEO, there's a skit of the, the, the C, CEO from Skype this week, just basically talking, uh, doing a kind of deranged CEO uh, routine uh, about uh, how everybody uh, <laughs> now says Zoom instead of Skype. But yeah, I mean, it could be worse. They could be asking people to set up Mixi accounts. Meanwhile, Osaka, um, the number three city in Japan uh, after Yokohama, 
um, that always wants to be number two is number two. They are number two for positive cases of COVID-19 at the moment. So yeah, they're beating Yokohama. Congratulations, Osaka. But just to remind everybody that Tokyo still is worse, they are going to actually do mandatory passenger um, temperature checks on Shinkansen uh, travelers from Tokyo. <laughs> I mean, seriously, what's the, what's the point at this point? They're not going to resume go-to travel, so that, that at least that's a small bit of common sense. And there's the thing that I was saying before, uh, that in Kobe, the um, yeah, 55% apparently are from variant infection. So that's just a sign of how quickly these new variants are spreading in Japan. Um, and uh, yeah, the final, final thing is just uh, in terms of the vaccines, what's happening with the Johnson & Johnson, the Moderna, uh, the AstraZeneca, the Pfizer vaccines and so on, um, they're just super exciting. Um, apart from the fact that they are, of course, changing the approach to healthcare, what's really exciting is the way that the mRNA viruses work, that they, you know, basically train antibodies to detect and respond to certain types of RNA profiles, which obviously can be viruses, but they can also be cancer. Um, so people are talking about how the sort of super accelerated development of, you know, shots to respond to a coronavirus, these could be applied to cancers like in, in really near future. So in a way, I mean, this is the thing. Crises have these sort of positive outcomes. Um, and this is uh, kind of one of those possibilities that all of a sudden, you know, this is kind of forced medical research to jump ahead in a way that we could actually be a lot better off or at least have, have a lot more options health options in the future that we didn't have before so that's a positive but overall yeah the situation is not good it's not really worse but uh, that's what's going on with coronavirus in tokyo this week